Hi, it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight coming to do this video on the 21st of June. So we are still at zero degrees of Cancer in terms of the sun's position and we've got the full moon in Capricorn within the next few hours actually as I record this. And what I wanted to talk about today is something that's kind of um, been sort of nagging at me for um, a few weeks and it was just finding the right sort of um, words, right ideas to be able to put it together. But it's about grounding and earthing and connecting with um, the earth, which you know, is becoming more and more and more essential as we sort of move through this year in particular. You know, I've talked a lot recently about the fact that we have strong air in the astrology this year. And when there's really strong air, we have a real sort of um, focus on the head, on ideas, on the mind, and um, the sort of the energy is really, really fast. It's quite difficult to pin anything down because air can't really be contained. It is everywhere. Um, but it can, you know, depending on the transits and your charts and generally what's happening, it can be quite overwhelming especially if you're the kind of person who um, is very head-based. And I speak for myself. Um, I have got Virgo rising, so that's Mercury ruling my chart. I've got Gemini at my midheaven, and I've got an Aquarius sun. I've got Uranus and Pluto in Libra. You know, so I'm, I've got a lot of air in my chart, and I am kind of, yeah, I spend most of the time in my head which, you know, isn't a bad thing, but it can, it can get to be quite a lot. Um, so I've been um, sort of thinking about, um, you know, the importance of being in my body and grounding into my body. And that process for me really started in earnest in January when I um, started doing a daily sadhana yoga, kundalini yoga sadhana, online and there's a group of us who meet every morning and you know generally manage about five or out of seven days a week but I'm getting up to do that which is really really beneficial but um sort of stage two if I guess if I can call it that came forward in um mid-May when I went on an amazing yoga retreat and I'm going to give a shout out to Katie Robertson here because um, she taught me a really useful technique on that retreat. And it really helped me, I think probably for the first time, connect to Earth and Earth as a consciousness and um, Mother Earth, Gaia. Um, it was a really amazing weekend. We were outdoors for almost all of it, you know, working with the elements um, very much sort of coming down into our bodies so that we could then go off out into um, deep space, which was the theme of the weekend, but um, incredibly powerful. And, you know, I'm still working with the energy from that retreat and in particular the connection to Earth. But, you know, if we think the sun's now at zero degrees of cancer, so, you know, in many respects, we should, we're coming to a time where we're going to feel um, like we want to connect um, more with our inner world, with our emotional world. You know, cancer's the crab, it's very protective. It's about hunkering down. It's about coming within, finding that sort of nurturing sanctuary, that safe space where you can sort of really be true to who you are. Um, but, you know, there are still a lot of air out there. Um, you know, Uranus is active still and is going to activate some quite potent fixed stars in the coming weeks. You know, so there's but we're no by no means um sort of you know coming into a time of calm quite yet. So grounding and earthing and being embodied is still really, really critical. And what's been coming through to me, um sort of again you know it's been building but this year in particular the solar activity is absolutely nuts it's off the scale you know it's unprecedented we're getting solar flares you know daily basis um and it is a lot for us to deal with you know 
for you know anybody watching this kind of content you're already going to know you know you're sensitive you're going to feel the shifts and what's going on you know with the energies um but you know even people who aren't or particularly sensitive or don't consider themselves to be sensitive are being affected by this solar activity and you know if you're really tuned in um you know and again I'm going to speak from my own experience because that's all I can really share you know I have been really struggling with headaches um with pressure around the head around the sinuses back of the neck um sort of jaw problems can be, you know, step forward, um, the ears, ringing in the ears, eyes, problems with the eyes, and just general kind of head, neck and upper shoulder areas, you know, seem to be um, the pinch point for me. And I always know when there's quite a lot of solar activity going on because I start getting headaches out of nowhere. Um, and I have got one now <laughs> and I did um, check Reese um, late, you know, um, just now. And yeah, there are, there's been another M class flare and I'm no expert in the flares. You know, I would suggest um, Pam Youngins is a really good person to follow because she tends to track what is going on. But I guess the, the sort of what's been coming through is the fact, you know, these flares are for our greatest good. It's all part of the ascension process. It's helping us to increase the light quotient in our bodies. It's helping us to shift into a more crystalline base as opposed to carbon based. It's helping us to shift all that density, all that toxicity, all the stuff that's been locked in is being sort of um, blasted away almost by the amount of light that's coming through. So this is really good but it is also really challenging you know it is not necessarily a gentle process so I think you know for me being grounded being embodied having that yoga practice is really important um but something I learned on the retreat um Actually, I'm just going to go back a second because what I wanted to say is, you know, as this solar um, light flares, whatever, are coming down into the planet, they are con contacting anything that is on the surface of the planet, which includes us. And of course, you know, the nature of our physiognomy, is that right? And um, we are, the heads are at the top. So the light is hitting the head first and so if there are any sort of blocks or um, challenges or anything sort of around the top area that's where you're going to feel the discomfort and I think you know again you know so many people are saying they're struggling with headaches sinus problems dizziness sort of spaciness you know mind and um, clutter mental health is obviously a really big issue as well and continues to be and um, so it's finding ways of being able to allow that energy to move through without causing too much um, discomfort and disease and distress because, you know, although, you know, it is becoming a very physical process as we ascend and as we allow more light in, you know, it's not supposed to beat us it's supposed to um you know, we have to find ways to allow it and to be able to integrate it. So, Going back to the retreat, we did this amazing um, practice, which basically brought our, um, the energy, the red sort of earth grounding energy, root energy, up through the spine, the neck, into the head, into the third eye, and then back down into the earth. So, you know, I found that really, really powerful. It's not something that I had done before. Um, and it really helped me earth and ground in. And actually, it was during that retreat that, as I said at the beginning, you know, I found I made this connection with earth. And what she said to me um, was that she'd been waiting She'd been waiting for that connection. She'd been waiting for me to kind of see her and feel her and recognise her and know her. Um, and it made me realise that actually one of the biggest crises of, you know, the human race at the moment is the fact that we have become disconnected. We're disconnected from ourselves. We're disconnected from our higher selves and we're disconnected from the earth. And, you know, again, no judgment. It's the way our society works. You know, there is so much focus on... Um, 
you know, well, well, there's no focus on getting out barefoot on the ground, um, unless you, you know, someone who knows, if you know, you know, but the majority of people, you know, just think that's a bit weird and a bit crazy, you know, tree hugging, mm, they're weirds as well, hi, um, you know, the food we're eating, there's so much processed food with, with this, um, there's chemicals in it, everything in our, household products and our beauty products um you know in our food in the air in the water you know this obsession with social media again you know I, i'm not exempt i love social media but you know this kind of we are a, a society where we're just completely glued to our phones to our headsets to the tv alcohol drugs all of that there's just so much sort of built into the way we live that is almost designed to keep us disconnected um, you know, and I think, you know, for those of you who manage to kind of push that aside, you know, that that takes a lot. You know, it takes a lot of um, courage and strength to do that um, because that's not really what we're encouraged to do. Um, but, you know, before I go off on a rant, because that's not really my style, um, it is more about being able to find ways to connect. So, I went out for a walk this morning, um, beautiful day, the sun has finally come out here in the UK, it's gorgeous, and I um, went off piste, went off track and went into the woods and um, yeah, had um, a really beautiful connection with quite a few trees actually, I do, I am a tree hugger, um, and the kind of the feeling of comfort and, and being held that I get just by touching a tree is always almost quite overwhelming but what um i was shown was that the trees are there what well, part of their service to us is to help us process and transmute our emotions our anxiety our overwhelm and actually that's what they want to do because it's really easy for them so you know it kind of explains why you always feel a lot better when you've been out in nature when you've been walking around you know in the woods it is just really um, well, it's grounding, but, you know, we always feel better. And we always say, you know, to, if if you're suffering from overwhelm or anxiety, get out in the woods, get out into nature, you know, or even into the sea, into water, into the river, but connect to the elements because that's where the healing is. And the trees showed me that actually that's what they want to do. But the problem is that as more and more trees are cut down and removed and as we sort of live in more... um sort of built up societies and um, situations, you know, it is harder for them to do that because we're not there to connect with them. Um, and I was also shown that one of the best ways to ground your energy right now, especially with regard to the head and grounding that sort of solar energy and all that light that's coming in that might sort of slightly get stuck in the head is by actually um, making contact with the earth and your third eye and this area of your head. So whether that's sort of through actually connecting with the tree physically and putting your head there or getting down onto the ground into child's pose, again, putting your forehead on the ground, you know, these are really effective ways to bring that energy straight into the ground, you know. So if it is getting stuck up here and it's causing problems, you know, just find a way to be able to do that and see if that helps um because it kind of it was so obvious but i hadn't thought about it before so um yeah and i felt really called to share it so um yeah the the other sort of technique is using um sort of visualization and focus and intention to really bring the rooted earthed energy up through your legs or through your root, depending what position you are in when you do it. And um, it's really good to do it in child's pose, actually, if you can, um, and bringing it up the spine, up the neck, through the head, round into the third eye and down, you know, round through the face and then bring it down the front of your body and down out into the ground again and sort of creating the cycle of energy so that it starts to flow and just imagining that all that sort of um 
sort of excess and anxiety, overwhelm, sort of scattered and um, frenetic energy that might be sort of sitting in your head is just melting away as the energy carries it through and it takes it back into the ground, down into Mother Earth to be transmuted. So, um, you know, there's lots of support for us, but we do need to kind of make that effort and, um, you know, yeah, make that effort to actually make it work for us because, um, you know, we are part of this process and there is so much that we can do to support and assist and carry it through. Um, but, you know, we need to sort of play our part as well. So I hope that helps. I hope that resonates with you or with some of you um, and it's given you something else to think about. Obviously, with the full moon in Capricorn, you know, this is very much about Earth energy. So we're grounding in even more with that energy. Um, you know, so this is a great time to do this practice and to um, get out and connect with nature if you can. But, you know, it has to be ongoing. We've got this really strong eight energy this year, which is about sort of bringing that connection down, you know, as above, so below keeping a real strong balance within both, but being able to integrate both because we can't, um, if we stay too much in the spiritual in our heads and in our um, sort of in the stars out there in the cosmos, <coughs> excuse me, we are not fulfilling the purpose of actually being here and being physical and embodied. But again, you know, if we are sort of too much in our bodies and we're not aware of the more spiritual aspects and the energies out there then again we're going to miss it as well and we kind of miss the um almost miss the boat um so it's about being open to both so you know this is not a time to really want to escape out to the stars and to go home which i know is really common for star seeds this is a time to be in the body to ground to earth but to be aware as well of the beautiful flow of energies and because it is the higher frequencies that need to come down in order to allow us to rise up so as above so below the beautiful sort of infinity symbol with the eight energy um yeah so that's all i've got for you right now um, but yeah let me know what you think and um yeah, have an amazing full moon. Lots of love.